All right, as we uh, kick off hour number two, as promised, we welcome in the voice of the Orange, uh, Matt Park, to talk some SU football and basketball. Matt, always great to chat with you. How are you today? I'm good, guys. Beautiful day. How are you? It is a beautiful day. You, you playing a little golf today or not yet? I uh, might uh, try to dust them off a little later, yeah. Good. Excellent. Um, all right, so Matt, I got a yeah, question for Go you. ahead, Paulie. Do you, mm-hmm. do you like the, uh, the worst song bracket we're doing? Considerably better than the supplement bracket. Let's start with that. I agree with that. So that's yes. a step in the right direction. Why didn't you just keep it best bad song? Right. You were struggling with the title, best worst. It's not the worst. You're not trying to find because the worst song of all time. That's no fun. You're trying to find the worst song that people like. Right. But Steve, so no, the idea is not blame this on me because I'm with. I feel the same way with what Matt just yeah, said. Yeah, but you couldn't grasp it. I just said, what, "Am I supposed to vote for the song I like or don't like?" And then you said, "Vote for the song you don't like." Here's what you do: you guys have fumbled this every day. You go, oh, "How are we supposed to lay it out to people?" And then you wound up with worse song. Here's what you should have said: If it's this song or that song, which one are you turning up? Right, which is, we talked about the that. Win, so the no winner sense. of the tournament is going to be the song that is not a great song, and you're kind of embarrassed to say you like it, but if nobody else was around, you would turn it up. It's the same song that when you pull into an intersection and it's on, you turn it down. <laughs> right. That's the test. Where were you when I needed you, Matt? To Wait, but we this? had this discussion, Polly, and you refused. On, I mean, yeah, go ahead. When was the last time you got something right the first time? <laughs> that would be the first time. Uh, well, I did say, I did say, uh, UConn was a blue you, blood. You were right year. about that. You were right about that. I don't think there's any question yeah, now. Interesting one. Um, yeah, it's hard to admit. I mean, they're obviously awesome uh, uh, from a Syracuse perspective. It's uh, you know you recruit the same types of players and uh, same types of resources, and you'd like to think the same type of history. It, it's not the same type of history. You know, Back when Syracuse was pretty good, you think in the 70s and 80s and all that, UConn wasn't. And then you had the 90s, they were both good. And, and what UConn's done is close to unprecedented to have six titles in a quarter century. Yeah, I was going to start with football, but since we decided to go down the basketball path, let's talk a little Cuse basketball here. Um, you know, bring us up to date on where things stand with this roster right now. Obviously, Eddie Lampkin coming in from Colorado. They got a couple freshmen coming in. What, what other pieces do you think they, they're going to add uh, from the portal? I would assume a point guard, right? I mean, a- anybody that you've got your eye on, Matt? No, I mean, I, I don't come at this one from any uh, – inside knowledge or, you know, I'm not waking up and checking the portal every day to see who's going to be the great fit. I mean, there's so many players out there and a lot of them, you look at the production they had at their previous school and you're thinking, gee, why couldn't this guy fit? Or everybody could uh, have something added to their team with this player. You know, in reality, at least speaking for the Syracuse coaching staff, I think this is the trend what they typically do they're going to focus on six or eight guys and drill down on them people that they have relationships with whether it's directly with the kid or through their coaching uh, network and that's who they're going on i think people have pretty much surmised about who those folks are i, I don't know that anybody's going to come in completely from left field uh, so that's the kind of I guess list that we're looking at, you know, here to, to see. I think we all could talk about the positions that have got to be addressed. Uh, you, you know, we, we don't talk enough probably about Chance Westry. It's easy to overlook him. He didn't play last year. Uh, he's going to plug in at an area of need and is somebody that, knock on wood, is going to be a considerable player for you, play a lot of minutes. Uh, but he doesn't necessarily address the true point guard, distributor type player. Um, you know, I'll let. Uh, Judah say for sure when he's not going to be here if it comes to that, but I think we're all kind of working on the assumption that he's not going to be back next season, so you've got to replace something there, and and, uh, Judah's the best player on the team and commanded the ball a lot, and and they went as he went, so you're going to have to replace the engine part of the team, but the the, the steps that have been made so far, certainly the adding of Lampkin is bringing something to the roster that hasn't been there in years. You brought up Judah Mint. Uh, can you shed some light on why he hasn't announced yet? I think we all just assume that he's putting his name in the draft. 
Uh, and as you said, I think we all just kind of assume he's not coming back. He, he had the perfect opportunity to say something with the report that was out there, and then he, you know, he chose not to confirm or deny. He just got upset that there was a report out there. Can you shed some light on the why he hasn't said anything? Again, I haven't spoken to Judah, so I, it's just my read on the situation that uh, in talking to him, my read on the situation would be, number one, he's keeping his options open. Can't fault him for that. I do think Judah sees himself as a future NBA player. God bless him, and uh, hope that he does get there. But we know that he didn't necessarily take a real step forward this year off of last year's combine results and and that process. He came back to try to improve himself. I I thought he had a great year. Did he really improve his jump shooting and the types of things that he must have been told to address? It, It doesn't look like that's been a major improvement, right? So while I know Steve, you're saying, oh, it's a foregone conclusion. He's going to the draft. He very well may. If I were in his position, I would be open for business. That's an option. Staying in Syracuse could be an option. Going somewhere else to the highest bidder is an option. And I think because he sees himself as an NBA player, he doesn't yet want to say publicly, first of all, he has obviously hasn't shown up on another college roster, but I don't think he wants to close the door on that publicly yet. And it's his prerogative. Um, by the way, if you're going to ask or get into it, I mean, I don't think Mike Waters did anything wrong either by reporting it. But uh, Judah obviously wants to express his own feelings on his own timeline. And I'm sure right now he's with his family, checking out on all of the possible doors that he could go into and, and trying to get the best option for him and his family and his future. And uh, especially in this day and age with the rules and, and the player mobility and all of that and the, and the empowerment of the student athlete, uh, you've got to give him that right. So uh, there will be a time, I guarantee you, he will have uh, an announcement and he won't miss it. All right, let's uh, switch gears. Let's talk some football now. Fran Brown addressing the media this morning, uh, giving us some uh, some injury updates on a couple of players, Ronda Gaston, uh, Jackson Meeks in particular. Uh, what can you tell us uh, about uh, you know what this team's dealing with injury-wise? Yeah, well, everybody know Gadsden last year had the Liz Frank injury. The solution to that calls for a screw to be put into your foot. I heard a story the other day that it, even I think you imagine having literally a piece of hardware in your foot. And there's probably some listeners that uh, have the fake hips or knees or uh, other types of uh, repairs like that. That even in the winter, you feel it in there, right? That metal freezes at a different rate than the rest of your foot. And, and there's some uh, odd sensations that you get with that. Well, anyway, what they tried to do with him in spring ball was, look, the key thing that's going to happen injury-wise is you're going to get the screw taken out of your foot, which happened here just re- recently in the last week or so. And what his role was in spring ball was to work in just blocking type drills, nothing super strenuous, nothing that was going to uh, risk it further injury or any of that uh, allows him to complete his recovery. And what they're really trying to do is place a priority on summer workouts and for him to be full goal when he can work in conditioning with his teammates, work with Kyle McCord at quarterback, uh, pass and catch and all of that and be ready to go when they get to August and more importantly when they get to the Ohio game to open the season. So that's the plan with Gaston. Uh, With Jackson Meeks, it sounds like they have the unique circumstance here. Of course, the head coach having brought a handful of players with him that he was familiar with at Georgia, he said Meeks last year they tried to kind of get by on treatment only and then here decided – surgery would be the best course so that kind of shut him down for spring ball but then their goal will be the same thing and when it comes time for the players to have their own practices in the summer that Meeks will be ready to go any other uh, observations uh, Matt as the spring game creeps closer it's uh, what a week from uh, this coming Saturday uh, you know it's it's winding down now what, what are your overall observations of the team and what you've seen so far well a couple one I would say about uh, what coach Brown said this morning again in practice is you know the thing he thinks is missing the most is kind of the physicality and toughness and he's looking to get that going up and up one of his big quotes today was about you know he wants to run the ball when the defense knows you're going to run the ball he wants to be able to run for 100 yards in the fourth quarter and 
put games away that way. So that's a little window into uh, not only the type of team he wants to have, but then even strategically how they might handle playing with the lead and that type of thing. And, and uh, I think that's uh, an indication of the style of ball that uh, he wants to offer. The other is the quarterback's really good. That's not a huge revelation. And I love the human nature slash marketing of the thing that last year he was thought to be a pretty good quarterback right at Ohio State. Now that he's in Syracuse, I don't see Kyle McCord showing up on any of these top 15, top 20, top 25 quarterbacks lists. But uh, if you go watch him in practice, he throws a very easy ball, catchable, very informal survey on my part. They just kind of walk around and, and a few of the former players that I know that happen to be around in practice occasionally it just kind of wink or nod towards the quarterback, like, hey, this guy's pretty special. And uh, one of them who would know just the other day, so, hey, this is maybe the best quarterback that's been here since McNabb. So that, that, that's a saying a lot. And uh, he'll go as the line goes. The receiving core, I think, is very good. And they have more good players than have been in the program in a long time. And now it's the next step of seeing how they come together. But uh, there's plenty of reason for optimism. What are you expecting to, to see from the spring game? I never did expect much of anything from the spring game. Yeah. So I think you'll see they'll divide into two teams. Uh, and again, I also don't get all worked up about the format. I don't, I don't think that the fact the format's changing slightly is any condemnation of how they've done it in the past. I think though every coaching staff in America wants to get through the spring game without injury. So what will be a little different here is I think it's maybe a little more traditional You've tended to see at other schools or even here in other years, they'll choose up sides, try to make it somewhat fair, keep the quarterbacks from getting hurt, and play good versus good for a little bit. I, maybe not. Maybe they're going to play ones versus twos. I don't know enough about that yet. I, I expect to find that out in the next uh, few days. It's going to feel a little bit more like a game. It might be a running clock, but it'll feel like quarters and play actual series and pump the ball and that, that kind of thing. But this, the spring game is a little show to give you a feel for what it's like. Come into the dome, check it out, keep the momentum of the uh, off season going and nobody gets hurt. And lastly, uh, Matt, I know you're a baseball guy, obviously the season underway. Uh, what, uh, what stands out to you from the first couple of weeks of the season? Yankees off to a great start. Uh, what else stands out to you? I'm actually surprised how little baseball I've watched myself uh, so far this year. I've watched very little. Is that right? Um, yeah, I watched uh, the last maybe three Iowa women's basketball games, <laughs> and uh, I actually have not jumped in. I mean, is Yankees on deck tonight? I think it probably is, yeah, right? It's, uh, first Yankees, one of the year. Marlins. Yeah. yeah, so maybe that'll be my uh, opening day in a way. No, I've, I've flipped it around. I mean, obviously the hot start, uh, Juan Soto's awesome, so that's exciting to, to see what he might bring to the table. The Yankees have some injuries and, and pitchers that they're working through here. Um, that's about it. No uh, real baseball observations yet. Got gotcha. you. All right. We'll dust off those More about golf the Masters. Cups. We're really yeah, diving exactly on that. right. Exactly. It's a it's a big week for golf fans. Paulie, any okay. anything before we go? No, I, I've been scolded. I did a bad tournament. I get it. No, it has potential. You can still save it, probably. Just phrase it that way. <laughs> All right. Best worst song. I'll go back to it. Excellent. See, you best, talk some sense into that. Best worst. Thing. Best bad. Best bad. Best worst is confusing to people. The selection of songs in your mind was bad. You would know way more about music than any of the rest of us. I don't know how you selected your group. I think when you were brainstorming some catchy songs, they weren't all necessarily bad, but they were all in this category of how do I decide? Do I like these? Do I not like these? Do I tell people I like these? Yeah, it's, that's where you came up with a fun bracket. Steve had a dilemma with Ice Ice Baby. I, I did, but I, I'm I, aware I, of it. I, do, do not blame <laughs> me for this because I I said it should be best worst or you know best bad. I'm good with that as well. Matt, thank you for talking some sense into him. I appreciate it, and uh, we will talk again <laughs> That's soon. The tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Matt Park, voice of the Orange, uh, joining us here on the show. I don't like how you sabotaged this. How did I sabotage? Because you 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 brought. I it tried up. to do this. You brought it no, up. I know, but I tried to do what Matt said and you just constantly picked at it until it got confusing for I everybody. I just wanted to understand what I was doing. If you just shut up and, okay. th- like Matt said, if I j- if you just did what you initially said, which I did, and you said, but well, what if it's the best? I'm not taking the blame the for this. I am not taking the blame for this. I just want a clarification. I, there's legitimately multiple people in the chat while you, every time you talked, they had it wrapped and you would, they'd be like, 
Steve is confusing the hell out of me. All right. Next time, next year, you just do this. Every 1245, I'll just step I told outside. You what next I'll year's step is outside be, of the studio. Next year's is going to be, is gonna be uh, words I can't pronounce. <laughs> it's going to be 64 oh, that'll of the hardest be fun. words for Polly to say. Yeah. That's that's more in line with like the, my voice. That's back with the supplement bracket. Yeah.